All right. All right, so I think we'll go ahead and get started. So welcome everyone. It's great to see a house here with us today. Uh -huh. uh, if you haven't signed in, there's a sign-in sheet. I might bring it back with me, but if you can sign in before you leave, that's great. Again, it just helps us uh, with the pizza. We just have to prove that there are people that we can't keep. So uh, today's speaker, I him, is Yang Cheng Bai, and he is a research assistant professor in gastroenterology, working specifically in this video. Okay, so uh, I guess it's a uh, late good morning, everyone. Thank you for coming to uh, my my uh, talk today. Yeah, thanks for nice uh, introduction uh, of the Marcy. So for some of you, I think I already be Fred for years, and I remember ten years ago. Remember, really, I I gave my first presentation also in this room, and after I started my uh, first job. Uh, 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 at the University of Michigan. So today, and uh, from uh, 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 the title, you can see I, I would like to uh, talk about uh, some uh, uh, research findings using the big data and the multi-omics to uh, look at the microarray and the target uh, uh, genes interactions. So before I... Uh, Okay, I could just use a keyboard. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah so before I uh, start the uh, uh, story, I would like to give a little bit of background about the uh, cancer first. So everyone knows this name, I think, uh, which is a very scare term. And when people hear someone had cancer, and that's that's like really got a good okay. I'm going to die immediately. So cancer actually is in the in the uh, molecular level is really. Uh, it's something that uh, caused by uncontrollable division of abnormal cells. So usually, in, when the cell uh, divide, uh, uh, divides uh, itself and it goes to the very normal stage and continue dividing and grow the tissue and uh, uh, plays a normal function. But in the cancer, it really kind of the abnormal and caused a lot of uh, uh, continuous abnormal cells, so the function of that uh, 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 cell is play actually uh, uh, weirdly, so that cause some diseases. So uh, here, this is a part of the tissue here. If you see this area, this is a really, uh, really uh, like a cancer cell div uh, division area. So you can see the difference between the cancer area and the normal area. Uh, so uh, many years ago, and uh, people know this, uh, uh, and, but it's uh, really hard to find out why. And uh, like uh, uh, the National Institute uh, uh, of the Health, specifically the NCI on National Cancer Institute and uh, NHGRI, uh, National Human Genome Research Institute, we know that's where the human genome was sequenced first. And place, and uh, so they uh, initiate a project called the TCGA or the Cancer Genome Atlas. So this project actually is try to sequence many uh, cancer individuals, and also has their normal uh, matched uh, part sequence to try to determine or characterize the 
uh, the cancer uh, signature. So uh, mainly, and uh, they they're going to conduct this uh, uh, through their next generation sequencing technology because at, at the uh, like many years ago we don't have that technology, and uh, so this project actually has uh, sequenced more than 30 cancer uh, type and subtypes, and now uh, the data are publicly available to the uh, community. And uh, so the, for the level one, for some additional like detailed data, you have to request access through the NIH portal site. So, so here are specific cancer types and their data information. As we can see, each cancer type has uh, uh, abbreviation and also full names. And these are cases shifted by the, uh, the, the center. And also, there are actually final cases available for, for each cancer type. And as you can see, this was uh, mainly uh, uh, conducted uh, in, uh, and finished uh, in 2016, which is th three years ago. So this is a continue for the cancer types. And as, as, as we can see, this covers uh, multiple cancers, and uh, er almost every, every, every area in the body has been determined. And some are have lots of cases, and some are don't have. And this is depend on availability. And this project is actually across the nation. So another background information I would like to give is uh, uh, MRA or message RNA and uh, microRNA. And uh, I think everyone here are familiar with this MRA terminology, and the full name is a messenger ribonucleic acid. And this is, this is actually the uh, transcription product of the gene or DNA. So, and uh, I think through the uh, RNA polymer II, uh, uh machinery. So uh, the microRNA or the uh, uh, miRNA, and this is uh, actually it's also an RNA, but it's uh, small, and the full name is a micro uh, rainbow nucleic acid. So this microRNA is not something uh, be used for uh, translation, and uh, rather than it play the very important roles in doing the post-transcriptional regulation. So specifically, this is uh, 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 actually the small RNA uh, uh, which binds to the three prime untranslated regions of the message RNA to play its roles. So how microarray uh, is generated, uh, and it's a very long uh, process. And uh, so I just uh, here give a brief overview about the major process. So the microarray usually could be uh, uh, like uh, uh, generated through the intra intergenic region, and this one will be uh, under the RNA polymer tube's help as well. So the first part of the forms, uh, including the stem loop structure, is called a pre microarray, the PRI. And uh, then after that, this product will be. Uh, continue be processed by the uh, machinery called the drusher. Drusher and uh, uh, will remove these connections and generate another product called the uh, pre microarray. So the PRE now. So and this one also has the supply some involved here. Everything here step happens in the nucleus. So after this process, the pre uh, microarray will be transported. Uh, out from a nucleus into the cytoplasm. And the cytoplasm, this is the area that uh, happens in, we know the, the translation also later on happens for the MRA. So, so here, this happens through the exporting file uh, uh, help. And go come to the here, there's another uh, process through called the machinery called the diester. So this one is uh, cut off the stem loop and become a, a, a uh, become a two-stranded uh, complex. So only one strand will be kept, the other strand will be degraded. So the, the one that uh, kept it uh, will form the, the, called the RNA-induced, uh, 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 I think the, uh, called the a small complex. So this one has uh, like a seed region together and they bind to the three prime UTR plates function. Sometimes, and uh, it will have the translational repression for the MRA and called the partial complementary. And it is a perfect complementary. Sometimes it has, uh, uh, you know, like doing the MRA degradation. So MRA never be translated. 
So microarray, why we study microarray? Because the microarray the expression actually has been uh, changed from a, a normal to diseases or including tumor stage. And uh, uh, so, so, so this actually has been discovered many years ago. We know some uh, uh, aberrant microarray expression has been associated with many type of cancers. Here is just to show an example about lung, lung cancer or the heart failure as well. So, so this uh, happens uh, in particular microarray expression. So, uh, therefore, we was to identify the additional microarrays in our human body, and uh, to see if there's also associated with certain diseases or cancers. And uh, one of the actually major challenging is uh, how we prototype this and how we identify this. Actually, it should go to the uh, other words. First, identify that, the prototype that. So many actually uh, computational approaches uh, have to be uh, actually uh, employed to study this. And why is the, why is the, I think the very popular one, the people talk about the clustering things, because in the network, we was to see how this uh, uh, microarray connect targeted uh, MRA or this genes. So, uh, previously, clustering for this uh, uh, microarray gene expression data actually mainly focused on the microarray gene expression data because of the first is uh, uh, NGS technologies uh, are not available very early, and the second is not many data actually available to analyze that. So, however, the uh, all these studies actually are not enough, especially we want to look at the complexity of the change, the correlation coefficient at the expression values between microarray and, uh, and MRA or its target pairs. And uh, moreover, the, when we look at the tumor at the normal sample simultaneously, and uh, there is really not a, not a single study even to do that. And uh, so fortunately, we have the TCGA data to compare that. And uh, so, so we was to develop some innovative bioinformatic tools or methods to cluster these interaction pairs and into functional modules. And then we want to visualize their interaction uh, while consider the both the cases simultaneously. So this is a figure actually demonstrate a, a very general how microarray uh, and uh, interact or target its uh, uh, MRI. So from this one, it's a very simple biopartite graph, right? The left is the MRA list, and the right is the microarray list. As we can see, one microarray could target more than one MRA, and the one MRA could be targeted by more than one microarray. So this creates a very uh, complete network and uh, how we can classify that or group in that. So to do these things, we was to make a hypothesis. So the hypothesis and uh, between tumor and the normal samples and the microarray uh, and its uh, targeting MRA, their pairs or their co correlation coefficient or anti or anti like in the opposite direction, or we call it anti correlated here. That means in tumor samples, their relation could be positive, but in normal samples, will be the negative and vice versa. So to do so, we need to uh, uh, do a pipeline and the processing from the raw sequencing data until we reach this. So this is a very, uh, uh, I mean, the time consuming steps and but we summarize it into six major steps. And uh, when the TCG uh, sequencing data were actually uh, uh, provided by the uh, by the uh, NIH. They only have a raw sequencing data. Many of us here knows how to process NGS data start from the FASQ files, right? And those things are the same here. And uh, so when we when we when we doing this, the TCG project actually has some uh, uh, pipeline already be applied through the RNA uh, what you call it, uh, like. Uh, the expression calling and also there they have some kind of read court or RPKM available uh, for us to use. However, these are very messy and uh, we have to do a uniform uh, step 
So what we did is uh, we first download this uh, both microarray and MRI expression files for all cancer types into a local uh, uh, server. And then we combine these samples for microarray and MRI to make four files. And uh, so for tumor, we have a microarray expression file and uh, for the, uh, also for the uh, MRI expression file, same thing for the normal. So we need to combine these things. And we arrange those things into an order of the samples to, to make correct audience when we calculate the correlation between microarray and MRI. And also we download some database prediction result for the targeting information locally and to check each pair, make sure they have a target relationship, at least computationally uh, predicted. So, 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 so then the, uh, we also recalculated the transcript per million to make it consistent because different sequencing center generate a different uh, normalized recent result. I think many, many, here knows that we was to do a uniform for these things. And we also did some basic statistic calculation like uh, mean, media, P, and FDR uh, values in order to make sure the result that we obtained are statistically significant. Then we will look at the both tumor normal samples. We combine them into a side by side format and make sure, and uh, we can compare them. And then we analyze the differentially expressed uh, MRA and uh, microarray pairs uh, between tumor and the normal samples. So on this column, and as everyone can see here, and it has lots of different commands, some other uh, Unix command, some other uh, executable, and some other R script, some other Pro, some other you know Python or some Java things. So because this uh, this project was actually completed in my uh, former lab students, some have this uh, programming skill, some has that. So, but finally we put it together into a pipeline like this. And uh, so, see, so yeah, here are specific how we did for the cluster identification and visualization. Actually, so the uh, Li Zhong is my uh, former PhD student. They did a uh, did the significant micro and MRI pairs help with many other student help. And uh, Xin Qing, and who is an undergrad student and just graduated last December and now work in the Facebook. And he did a, a cluster scoring algorithm doing that cluster detection. So Dr. Uh, Zhang, who is a faculty at the School of Public Health here did the statistical significance uh, at once and uh, uh, for the calculation as well. So another, uh, 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 Mr. Baker, who is an uh, uh, IT specialist, uh, he's uh, uh, very, very, very good in the server side and did some visualization coding for the, for the, for the web server, which I'm going to demo in just a second. So the one, one, one positive control that we used for validate our result is a uh, uh, gene, is a uh, FGFR3. The full name is uh, fibroblast growth factor receptor 3 gene. And this gene has been uh, uh, reported or identified to be associated with the bladder cancer. So this is the information from the, from the uh, table. If we magnify this and uh, also it's targeting uh, micro is uh, mirror 100. And uh, so we can see the food change for the FGFR3 in the tumor is higher. And the micro is targeting micro is uh, the expression is lower in the tumor because the micro is suppress this FGFR3 expression in the normal, but in the tumor and it's opposite. So, so yeah, so when we look at their correlation between tumor and the normal, it also goes opposite. And if the tumor is negative and the normal is uh, positive. And uh, so, so the, this is the p-value, FDR value, and also significant. And uh, when we look at our target uh, relationship at uh, uh, two out of three well-known target prediction databases, like target uh, uh, profiler and the Mirada reported that they have a targeted relationship. So this is a positive control what we see that. Now this is the wild uh, figure actually generated by our server to look at their correlations between the uh, targeting microarray 100 and the FGFR3 genes. 
the horizontal axis are the samples, and the, the vertical axis is the expression uh, level. So for the scoring algorithm, we actually uh, employ the modified uh, Louvre algorithm. So this one is actually very uh, popular community detection algorithm and using a greedy optimization method and try to optimize the modularity of a partition of the network. So the fu fu function that we defined for this algorithm is that we based on the microarray fold change, uh, sorry, the MRA fold change and the microarray fold change. And uh, we, we, we just take all the available fold changes for the, in, the, in that uh, cluster and uh, sum all them. And also we consider the, uh, their correlation between tumor and the normal. And so, by the way, these two first two are the node information, and uh, the, the third part is the ages information when we calculate the score. Then we assign a score to each cluster or each community uh, after we run these things. So in the, uh, in the algorithm itself, we also incorporate some statistics and uh, to do some uh, um, uh, like uh, significance calculation. So basically, we if we have a cluster, for example, identify like this three genes, three uh, microarrays connect like this, and then we think this is a cluster, and then we just uh, uh, randomize this by shuffling the ages and calculate the significance after we get the uh, number of the cluster scores greater than the one. Uh, that, that we reported significant to see how many are out of total shuffling or the uh, simulation steps. So this is a very uh, routine result and getting the how many uh, microarray and the MRA pairs with the inverse uh, correlation for the all the cancers. For example, for BLC, we have a uh, 998 uh, number of pairs. And uh, when we consider the also opposite fold change between tumor and normal samples, we reduce number of samples to the 578 because this is a means, uh, perhaps a means additional uh, uh, information for, for, for these pairs, not just the anti-correlated, they also expression the opposite. What's the, what's the so the relation between second and third columns, one is the including the second column, including both the uh, opposite fold change and the same type of fold change, but the third column is only opposite fold change. Means the third column is a subset of the second column. Yes, yes. So this is, a, this is a how many uh, community detected for all the available cancers we studied and also there there's a significant cluster based on the fdr value uh point one cut off and as we can see this is not consistent across because the number of the detected clusters not always associated with number of significant clusters okay this is another observation about the cluster size because when the Louis algorithm detects the cluster, some are big, some are small, and we arrange them into a, a increasing order from the how many clusters detected, and also cluster size will be the vertical, and uh, specifically there are least the number of clusters for the LUAD BRC cancer, which are two big cancer uh, data set in the in TCG. Uh, a portal and the uh, the LIHC. This this is a cancer actually has a lot of the or the most clusters, but the cluster size is not that as big as the LUAD and BRCA. And uh, but we do have a one big cluster for LIHC, and which we used for the further study. So from this uh, distribution, we also see the cluster score distribution, and the LUAD and the BRC again are close to the very high cluster score, and LHC is not in that uh, low, but uh, it's also somewhere here, and uh, this is the observation for the result. 
And uh, any questions so far? So uh, how do you calculate the form? We use uh, define the formula here. Oh, okay. Yeah, we, we consider the expression for both the uh, target gene or MRA and the micro okay. and also their yeah, ages. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah, uh, that one we have to look at the supplementary table paper. Where do you get a cutoff of 0.1? We just uh, take that uh, as uh, arbitrary ones because we don't want to, let's say, the lose a lot of biological meaningful ones. And uh, so the so the one that actually has very very uh, high ones and actually you know there could also be some to biological meaningful. And uh, yeah, we just haven't included everything for the further study. Any other questions? Okay, so now let's come to the step about the web tool uh, that associated mm -hmm. with this uh, uh, detection things. And I will do a demo after finish the slides. So the web, uh, so the website look like this. Okay, we have a data upload options here, user can choose their own file, and we also have some sample files here, can select each cancer. And uh, of course, the input format has certain things, it's on the website that talk about uh, what's the columns. And uh, there we can do some parameter filterization, which is on the left pad, the top part, and this is to tell what kind of information we only want to see here. Specifically, we have the uh, like uh, absolute fold change, like uh, MRI, micro, you want to see how, how big the fold change is, subset you want to look at. We also have a correlation range. We also have database prediction, uh, uh, like selection one, two, or three. And also the normalized expression range for MRI, micro, and here, and we have the also available if you want to see uh, some additional uh, things about the, you want to see after you upload, you want to only see the node that you are interested in or subset you're interested in after select, or you just reset the graph, go back. The second part here on the left side is the cluster calculation, which basically called the modified Louvre algorithm on the server to calculation that the user can get the result through the running on our server. Here, actually, also you can select how many runs or types of the simulations you want to perform, 1,000 1, or 10,000 or 100,000. The, long, the long bigger the, 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 the you want to run, and the, the longer time you take. Therefore, there is an email you could put, and instead of hanging on the server, when you uh, finish uh, like a battery or you just <laughs> close the window, they just stop, and uh, rather than you want to put the email, you get a link downloaded. And the third part has uh, uh, visualization things, and you want to just to see what's the p-value or q-value cut off the subset cluster by looking look at your interesting pairs. Okay, as we can see, this tool also has uh, some uh, additional selection by writing click each node, and some are micro some are MRIs, and we have uh, some additional functional annotation information here, which I also show you just a second, and that tells uh, some additional annotation. So, okay, so uh, this is uh, just the steps, and uh, I think uh, I will not just read through this, and uh, rather that we can look at the details. And uh, do the parameter uh, filterization, and uh, we could also do a search here. And uh, you type your interested in genes or microarrays, just so we will center that, and you can just visualize that uh, easily. And uh, again, so when you do the calculation for the cluster uh, step, and uh, you want to actually upload your file first, then select that, and later on, and you could download that also to visualize that. And the one thing I want to mention about the cluster visualization is uh, 
the so the graph for the visualization what we use uh, actually the technology use the node js application i think some of you here are very good in those uh, uh, visualization things and maybe can comment whether this is the best technology because so far we encounter a little bit of issue is that uh, i will show you just a second is that when we have to upload the whole graph especially uh, the beginning part, the node that the edges will move everywhere. It's very hard to control that. And uh, so we can get a comment feedback and see how to improve that. And uh, we have the edges, as we said, edges also represent the detailed information, not just the connections. Also <laughs> have the thickness and the color. Everything tells the different meanings. And we use different shape represent the either MRA or the microarray. And uh, as I mentioned, we have a cluster view function and uh, according to the Q value cutoff. And uh, there, I think a user can also collapse, expand the legend and see something that's just like uh, cosmetic uh, features. Another thing I want to mention is uh, databases integrated forward tool and uh, uh, listed here. And uh, for the microarray associated database, we have the HMDD and uh, uh, Sumo Mirror, and which is also look at the target changes uh, due to the uh, variant. And also mirror base, everyone heard this, is the database for the microarray sequence and annotation and we have incorporated this information too. And another very common uh, information and database we encourage is the KIG pathway. It's a uh, look at the pathway involvement for the microarray. And also, you know, and uh, we could link this to the MR as well for the gene as well. So for the MRA, we have David, and that's the very well known database for functional annotation, look at the goal terms information. And another thing that we have there is uh, Cosmic and look at the somatic mutations in cancers because uh, uh, we use the example cancer sequence data as, uh, as a, a data set we want to look at some uh, cancer specific. And also cancer tool, this is one to look at the ISO form and the immunology information uh, for those uh, how the microarray and the gene could be associated with uh, that. And uh, again, same thing for the KIG, I already mentioned that. So this is a, a magnified uh, the uh, screenshot for the tool. And uh, I think instead of uh, looking at this, and I want to do a little demo. So this is the one uh, we can try. So, uh, <clears throat> this. Okay, so the first thing is that, like I said, and uh, when I upload, for example, sample file, and this is a this is the interaction pairs, and uh, come to the come to the visualization, and the if you look at the legend here, and the circle is the microarray, and the, the square is the MRA, and if you see this color, the connection for the for the uh, for the ages, and you will see this is a normal because for each pair we have a tumor relationship and a normal relationship, right? And depend on the darkness for this database prediction, and the darker means the more database, uh, uh, more database prediction uh, validation for the relationship, and also thickness tells the correlation uh, like uh, strongness, and the thinker will get the uh, higher and the thinner will get lower. So, 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 yeah, this look like a hairball. I know many protein protein interaction databases also like this, but this is normal. This is why we need to develop uh, tools to, to look at that. So, if you click this uh, menu bar on the top uh, upper corner, and uh, you can go to the, you know, tools and uh, link there. And you could also go to the uh, tutorial page, and uh, we have all this step-by-step uh, -step information listed here. And if you click the 
uh, about, and uh, this is just the one tells us what we do that, and uh, we just need to put a publication on there. And uh, let's go back to home, and uh, let's reload this. And so if you see there is a very small double arrow on the middle area in the left <laughs> part, and this is, means something you can click, come out to a window, and you can do something here. So if you was to get those functions, you click this drop down menu, come up like three pens I just mentioned there. So for example, if you want to center gene, and we just look at the FDFR3, if you click center, it will show up somewhere here, reflection. And if you keep clicking this, it's moving here, moving here. Okay, so for this gene, if you was to see that name, if you position the mouse here, you will see the there is a label there, okay. So when you screw your mouse or drag, uh, you could get a, you know, a closer visualization. So this gene, actually, you can see, for example, this gene, and if you want to put this, keep this gene there, there are the fold changes between one and six, uh, between one and two, you need to select this between one and five, and this gene is what highlighted keep there because the fold changes still meet the criteria. The database of prediction, I think bit two, you, uh, wait, that because, of, because, of, because of MRA, microarray, that uh, getting the where, that's not, uh, not select one part, the other part will be gone, I think. Yeah, now you go back there. And uh, so if you want to keep those uh, gene names, you click the, MRA show the gene label, and uh, so those uh, circles are not be showed. And if you click uh, this button, it will microarray label will also be listed. So you could continue to, uh, you know, study more. And uh, for example, the one that has uh, this one By going back this, uh, this is a mirror 100, and because mirror 100 didn't pass that uh, expression uh, fold change cut off at the beginning, but now it's a go back. And if you was to uh, remove nodes, and uh, so, uh, here, you want to select the, Okay. Then now you keep this uh, database prediction the two, and uh, so the others were faded. If you remove node, the others gone. Just keep this, and uh, still moving. Sorry. <laughs> so, but it will start later on. And uh, so this one, that one, at, at this stage, if you want to study some additional things for this pair, so if you click the you know, right click these things, you pop out the HMDD, and uh, so where this information will show, there is another area, you click this bar, come out, and you could uh, just uh, maybe show this one, nothing annotated, it will not show there, and uh, if you was to see summary here, uh, annotation for this microarray, this information will show everything on the bottom, we have uh, all this, uh, columns parsed out from the database that uh, uh, downloaded from there. And for this, uh, for this uh, table, you could download uh, to your local computer uh, by selecting which format you want, like CSV, Excel, PDF. And so, so when you click this, it will ask you to you know, open or download, and uh, so it will, come up to, it will come up this information, and uh, you could download. And uh, so another thing is will be mirror base. So mirror base, as I said, is a is a uh, for microarray annotation. It also you can get this that tells you the uh, sequence itself, microarray and mature uh, ID and also sequence. And uh, so if you have a 
more than one row, it will show the multiple uh, pages. And for the gene, you can do right click, and you can select David, and uh, somehow this one is not uh, get that uh, information downloaded. And also the cosmic, you could select the uh, cosmic uh, <coughs> button tells you this is, this is FGFR3 gene full name and the location and tells the uh, tumor, tumor association, the bladder, and uh, some other, you know, uh, information also annotated. But every, every, everything annotated here is come from the cosmic uh, database. And uh, so another thing is uh, cancer, cancer, cancer tube connection is epitope search. So this one is a link to that uh, cancer tube website. And uh, so you can, uh, you can continue to work on this place. And uh, the, the, wait, where is that? Did I close that? Hear that. I'll close that, sorry. It's the farthest it's left tab. Huh? Uh, Where is that? On the farthest left tab. Oh, okay. Here, okay. Is this right? On this one. Enter. Somehow. Oh, here we go. Here we go. Thank you. Yeah, so for this one, and we could also link to the uh, last part here. Or you click this, go back, take. So this one will tell you if this information is available here. And uh, so, oh, I don't know. Oh, something. See that? The little bit of, you know, drag that. Click on the link, I think. Yeah, no, I can click this a little bit over there. So we'll see that bar that. But if you do click this one, the FGFR3, it will link to the Kick Pathway website. It directly navigate you to this FGFR3 link. And this is a blender cancer uh, associated pathway here. It plays the roles here. So, uh, yeah, so if you want to, uh, let's see, you finish this, and you just close this, and doing here. And uh, so now, after we finish the visualization feature, and if we want to do cluster calculation, again, you could send your files by browsing a window, or use a use, uh, sample input file, which is the one that we already provide here. And you click uh, selection, and again, you can put your email here, Number of runs you want to, let's say, because it takes a uh, long time if you do too many, maybe 100 times only. You click create, the, uh, uh, create cluster button. They said the file uploaded successfully, just waiting. And uh, so if you want to see the submission history, it will here. <laughs> it's most likely it's already finished. Let's see. Yeah, so finished, and you could open that, and uh, the cluster result. This is tells the cluster result and what's the cluster cluster size, like how many genes at the microarrays, and also the score. I think the will ask the the score uh, calculation. And this is the p value. This is the q value. This is the specific gene at the microarray pairs inside the cluster. So if you want to sort the score and uh, think go here, doing sort, and uh, so so if you want to do the decrease the order and uh, just select this. <coughs> oh, need need a <coughs> handle. Okay. All right. So now you have the the you know largest uh, largest cluster score is the 309. And you have a smaller. So then you want to dismiss this and go back. And if you want to do the visualization here, and this one is the pre-computed result up to the 
10,000 times that you can see visualization. And if we use LIHC as an example, and uh, the cutoff with the you know, maximum is one, this is only one available. And this is the community index 67. But in order to show this one, you have to first load this first. And then do that selection, because this is a bigger cluster. And uh, so if you was to, let's say, reload this, LIHC, and this is the one, only one that's significant here, and uh, meet this cutoff. And if you do another big ones, and the BRC ones, this is the biggest one. I like hairball like this. I'm glad this computer server can still upload this. And uh, so, so like here, you do the BRC. And see, you have a multiple clusters detected. And if you click only one, only, only the one that's associated with that. If you select another one, and you can see the changes. And uh, all those ones only show that the cool value associated with the, uh, that uh, community has been detected. So yeah, by changing this, you could do that. And uh, I think finally, when you finish, you don't want to get uh, this one distracted, you just click this again. Click this one and get that interesting thing. You know, continue to look at that. Yeah. I think that's one I want to show for the tool today. And uh, I think the running out of time. See the. Yeah, so the, in, the, in the summary, and uh, so we. Uh, uh, we actually uh, look at all the literatures, and so far this is uh, uh, actually only one to consider the uh, like uh, anti-correlations for their interaction for the tumor normal sample uh, tools to look at the macro and the MRA. And the specific our tool can calculate the uh, let's say the interactions and the clustering them, and finally and uh, visualize that. And uh, so we also have the database uh, for the functional annotation integrated in our tool, which is uh, very convenient for the researchers to look at the downstream analysis or annotation. And uh, so, so far the cases we actually uh, look at is a TCGA data set uh, for the public uh, side and uh, given the, like uh, what, the, what the significance association for each cancer or genes about the users and uh, welcome to try their old data set and this will give us a additional opportunity for them to try our tools and also give some additional uh, biological uh, interpretation for their data set. So yeah, I think finally I want to acknowledge uh, my uh, students and uh, colleagues and uh, I think uh, a couple of colleagues are here on campus and students uh, I think uh, uh, two already graduated, uh, two uh, high school students also provided some help to get it, get the experience. And uh, so this uh, this paper actually just published the uh, last month at the Gene's Journal. And uh, so welcome to read and I'd be happy to answer questions. So I think the time and restriction, I still have uh, something going on, but maybe stop here to answer some questions if, if I can. So thank you for coming. Yeah. But you doesn't seem to have any verification where does it extend? Yes, yeah, so, uh, so the, we actually just modified the Louis because the Louis has been, has been proved. Where does it mm. verify? Is there a question here? Whether your clustering result has any, made by any biological stance. Mm. 
So this is why we need to, based on the cluster result, we need to continue to look at some additional annotations rather than just from those pairs. The one thing is uh, we look at some uh, uh, changes, for example, after uh, uh, microarray, for example, we, 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 we reported the targeting, for example, five genes, and then the five genes were, could also be uh, you know, uh, targeted by another microarray. Then we look at them together by looking at their, for example, cancer association or some additional expression things and uh, just get an idea. And also another, another thing we are working on is to look at the mutation, you know, the three prime UTR side, because that one will give uh, uh, evidence whether microarray targeting genes. Right, but the cluster result, just the previous selection, gives like continue the prioritization thing. And uh, so from that three prime UTR, the target relationship will get in that uh, uh, whether this uh, targeting due to that variance change is obtained or the lost. So this is this is just additional future work to do. Yes. So your algorithm it was considering only microRNA binding in the three prime UTR. I think. It's yeah, we we rely on the three database prediction algorithm for that uh, target yeah. scan. Oh, okay. And yeah. things. So then they do three prime UTR. Yes, okay. and and indeed another. A future work we want to do that includes some additional target prediction tools. I know there are some people right now is uh, actually also try to compare different uh, like experimentally validated targets I like uh, uh, Diana tools I believe called or Tarbase and uh, that is also something we want to add 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 into annotation to further further future things. I think one of the biggest problems with the prediction tools that are out there, all of them, is, I mean, the cell type specific and context specific interactions that happen. And I think you have a unique data set because you have multiple cancer types. So I was wondering if you started comparing the interactions that you identified per cancer type might lead to some results and also help validate. For yeah, yeah, I tests. think that's a very good uh, suggestion and question. So I think uh, I think definitely definitely it'd be very cool to have that uh, comparison done. Yeah, uh, we do have some cancer comparison uh, actually uh, result in the in the actually published in the paper. We actually uh, look at the, how the how the difference between the clustering and also the uh, uh, like how the uh, visualization different across those cancers, TCGA. So what we what we actually did is uh, we could define some uh, like how many target step from my inquiry to the uh, let's say another inquiry for this cancer compared to the how many steps in the other other cancer. And uh, so this tells the whether it's direct targeting or the additional tag targeting. And we compare that. But there was a cell type and or some additional specific things. If you include in that, and that will, that will introduce some additional discussion, how we compare that. So yeah, so we do have this uh, sort of things and uh, reported in the in the, actually the the actually in the in the, in the paper. I think uh, that's a very good point. Yeah. Any other questions? Thanks. Thank you.